and welcome mindset to this session of learn extra life grade 11s we're looking at some science so i hope you guys are ready we've got your pens pads out and you're going to make notes i'm ty and i'm here with bruce who's going to be taking us through today's session bruce how are you very well and you ty good good good, good man what are we doing today right guys what we're having today is a revision lesson and there's been a lot of questions and a lot of people are uh, sending in requests to do some revision and i've decided to take a topic today as a revision topic which is going to be the mole concept a lot of people struggle with the concept of the mole so what i thought i'd do is take today's lesson the one hour and go through some of the important concepts of the mole just to make sure that we've got these and we understand them and we're able to apply the mole concept correctly all right cool, cool. Well, then, while you make your way across Great. the board, I'm going to talk to Thank the mindsetters. You. Mindsetters, you know the drill. By now, I shouldn't have to keep doing this, but hey, it's part of my job description, so I've got to. But anyway, <laughs> along. you guys know the link, www.facebook.com forward slash learn extra. Talk to me. Let me know what you guys are thinking. If you're lost anywhere, if you need help, if you just want to say hi, hey, please, please feel free to just post on the page. Just also want to say thank you to Liberty for sponsoring the show. But beyond that, as you can see in the corner there, yes, 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 yes. We've got this awesome Casio calculator giveaway and this labeler. And for today, you know, we just wanted to treat you guys, you know, so because you know, mindset is we're cool like that. So here is a Casio awesome, awesome digital camera. Like I've been wanting to like jack one, like you know, just just be like no, you know what? That's just a bonus, you know, but. This is an awesome, awesome camera. Mindset is if you want to win this, you need to look out and pay attention for the question that's going to come up. It's a trick one. It's a tricky one. So you need to make sure that you're paying attention and you get it down. Because that could win you this awesome, awesome 14 megapixel Casio camera. It is really cool. It is really, really cool. I wanted to get one for myself, you know, you know just to do some photography, freelance a bit. But anyway, you need to get on the page. Let <coughs> me know what you guys are thinking. You know what should be in front of you. Pen, pad and your phone so you can make sure that you post this um, post up on the Facebook page. But for now, this is why I hand off to Bruce who's going to continue the rest of the show. Bruce, take it away. Right, Ty, thank you very much. And guys, welcome to the show. As I said, we're going to be doing a revision show today. Um, I'm going to be looking at the mole concept and uh, I'm going to be making sure that we go over the important steps of the mole concept, make sure we understand them because the one thing you do need is a good understanding of the mole concept to take you through to grade 12. It is important in grade 12. You do need it, and remember, obviously, that's your important examination next year. So don't wait until next year. Make sure we understand it now. Now, as Ty has said, we've got this beautiful camera to give away, and they've asked me to come up with a question. And this question, um, basically, I'm going to give it to you. It's based on the, on the mole concept, and especially looking at using the mole concept in, uh, in uh, chemical reactions. And... Basically, the first person, I suppose, who gets this right and, make, and, and is able to claim this prize and hopefully um, will really enjoy the camera. So let me have a look at the question. I'll go through the question with you. And what I've done is taken a chemical reaction of potassium chlorate. And potassium chlorate, you might remember from your grade 10 chemistry, potassium chlorate is able to decompose in the presence of heat. And potassium chlorate will break down to form potassium chloride and oxygen gas. Now, the question I'm giving you guys, and I've written it up on the board, is that if 35 grams of potassium chlorate is allowed to decompose to potassium chloride and oxygen, what mass of potassium chloride and oxygen will be formed? So, guys, at the end of the reaction, what mass of potassium chloride and oxygen will be formed if um, I have 35 grams of potassium chlorate, which is allowed to decompose under the action of heat. Okay, there's the chemical equation. Okay, there's the question. All the best. I will go over this question at the end and we'll check the answers and uh, please send them through to Ty so Ty can have a look and see who's going to be the first person to get it correct. Okay, well, What's with that as the challenge question, let's now move on to our uh, lesson for today. And as I said, guys, we're going to be having a look at chemistry revision. And I'm going to have a look at the mole concept. Now, guys, to understand the mole concept, we have to understand the basic definition of the mole. Now, what is it? It's the classic textbook definition that you'll find in your textbooks at home, in your notes. And if you haven't got it, please make sure you're writing it down. 
A mole is defined as being an amount of a substance which contains the same number of particles as there are atoms in 12 grams of carbon. Okay. Now, guys, that is our textbook definition. A lot of people now start to stumble a little bit with this definition because it sounds quite complicated. But if they're going to ask you this in a test or exam, this is pretty much what they want you to, to come up with. So let's understand this. Let's now have a look at the, at the uh, whoopsie, this is now starting to play up a little bit. Okay, and let's have a look at an example here of this. Okay, right. So what I've got, basically you remember, that if we take our relative atomic mass, of a substance, okay, and we express that relative atomic mass of that substance in grams, then that mass of that substance represents one mole of that substance, okay. Now, we've spoken about, and I'll just quickly uh, work over here, we've spoken about uh, this 12 grams of carbon, okay. Now, if you have a look in your periodic table, so guys, please flip to your periodic tables, grab them, pull them out of your, out of your notes, you will notice that the relative atomic mass of carbon is equal to 12 atomic mass units. Therefore, 12 atomic mass units express that in grams as a mass, then 12 grams of, of carbon must represent, oh, this pen I think is giving us a little bit of problem tonight, is going to represent one mole of carbon. Okay, And because carbon is an element, it re must represent one mole of carbon atoms. So the mass of 12 grams of carbon will be exactly one mole of carbon. So if you had a little scale, okay, and you took carbon and you massed it out, and the mass, uh, the mass meter said 12 grams, I stop there and I say I've got one mole of carbon. Which means then, then what about other substances? Okay, I've got an example here of magnesium. Okay, now if we look in the periodic table, we will see now that magnesium has got a relative atomic mass of 24. So therefore, if we take that relative atomic mass of magnesium and we express that mass in grams, 24 grams of magnesium must then also represent one mole of magnesium. Okay, according to my definition. Another example Calcium. If we have a look at calcium, relative atomic mass of 40 atomic mass units. Therefore, relative atomic mass expressed in grams, 40 grams of calcium, will represent one mole of calcium. So guys, it's very important to see that when we talk about a mole of substance, then basically we're saying it's one mole of the substance is represented by the relative atomic mass of that substance expressed in grams. And that brings us to what is called the molar mass. Okay, One mole of any substance is always the relative atomic mass of that substance expressed in grams, the molar mass. So guys, we can talk about the molar mass of iron, the molar mass of sulfur, the molar mass of... Um, oxygen, the molar mass of iron, we, the molar mass of gold. All we have to do is go to the periodic table, look at the relative atomic mass, express that in grams, and that's the molar mass of that substance, which represents one mole. Okay, now that, guys, is the first of our important concepts. Now, what about our second important concept? Okay, pull this over here. Okay, all right, I'm just going to quickly have a look at this, sorry, I was just trying to show everyone if our 24 grams of magnesium or 40 grams of calcium, that they both equal one mole. Please note, 24 grams might not be as much as 40 grams. And you might say, well, maybe there's less here than here. Sure, there's going to be less in terms of mass, but there's still going to be one mole of that substance because it's the relative atomic mass expressed in grams. Uh, quickly, the unit, or sorry, the symbol for the mole, is given by small n, okay? And the unit is mole, M-O-L, which represents mole. That's the unit, okay? Now, 
little bit more about the molar mass. The molar mass is the mass of one mole of a chemical substance. The unit of molar mass is grams per mole. Okay, grams per mole. Now, where does the grams per mole come? Well, the number of grams in one mole, grams per mole. And that's where we get the unit of molar mass. Okay, now, what have we got here? The next one is also crucial in understanding the mole concept. Hopefully now we understand what the, a mole of a substance is. It's the relative atomic mass of that substance expressed in grams. Okay. However, what's also important is that one mole of any substance always contains the same number of particles. Okay. Now I've used the word particles as a general word. Okay. If I'm dealing with a pure substance, a pure element like magnesium or calcium or sodium, whatever, then those particles are going to be the atoms. So therefore, one mole of any substance, okay, and we can talk about an element, must contain exactly the same number of atoms. Okay, so what does this all mean? Okay, well, the number of particles, well, of atoms if I'm dealing with an element, that number of particles remains constant at all times. In other words, one mole of any substance will always contain that many number of particles, 6,02 times 10 to the 23 particles, which is a massive, massive number. There is absolutely no way that we can even understand how big that number is. It goes into the trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions. Okay, so no one's going to ask you to uh, say that number in, uh, in fancy words. All we have to know is that we've got this constant number of, of particles in one mole, 6,02 times 10 to the 23, and we call that the Avogadro constant, or what is also known as the Avogadro number. Okay, so therefore, one mole of any substance is expressed by the relative atomic mass in grams and will equal 6,02 times 10 to the 23 particles in that amount of substance. So if I go back slightly and I go back to my little sketches over here, 24 grams of magnesium, 40 grams of calcium, they all represent one mole. How many atoms of magnesium are we going to have present? How many atoms of calcium? Whoopsie. Are we going to have present? Okay, and the answer there is six. Oh, goodness, this pen really is playing games tonight. It is going to be 6,02 times 10 to the 23 atoms are going to be present. Those are the particles. So both in that pile and that pile will have exactly the same. Now, I know what a lot of people are, are saying out there, but hang on. How can something that's got less mass have the same number of particles? And that's the important stumbling block that we need to cross. We must remember that this amount, this mass here, okay, is a mass of two different substances. But the mass is equal to the relative atomic mass of that substance. Therefore, Magnesium, relative atomic mass of 24, therefore 24 grams represents one mole. 6,02 times 10 to the 23 atoms present. Calcium, relative atomic mass of 40 atomic mass units, therefore express that in grams. 40 grams represents one mole of calcium. How many particles? Exactly the same number of particles. Okay, and that is another very crucial part of understanding the mole concept. Okay, so let's go back down. We spoke about the Avogadro constant. Okay, and I sort of summarized it here a little bit. Thus, one mole of any substance will contain 6,02 times 10 to the 23 particles. And the symbol for the Avogadro constant is a capital N with a subscript A, a subscript capital A, standing for Avogadro. Okay, so that is the symbol 
for the Avogadro constant. And therefore, I've summarized it quite nicely there for you. 24 grams of magnesium is equal to one mole of magnesium equals 6,02 times 10 to the 23 uh, atoms of magnesium. Or what I've put here as well is that 40 grams of calcium equals one mole of calcium equals 6,02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of calcium. Okay. So, what's the last thing I want to have a look at in this, seg uh, this segment before we take a break? Well, from there, we're able to develop the two Equa or two equations that allow us to calculate the number of moles. The first equation is based on the mass and the molar mass, and the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass of that substance. And the second equation, the number of moles can be calculated by the number of particles divided by the Avogadro number, which is 6,02 times 10 to the 23 particles. These two equations are absolutely critical in understanding our mole concept, and we must be able to apply these. Okay, and what we're going to have a look at in the next segment, or we're going to, after we take a short break, is that we're going to look at now doing a couple of calculations together, making sure that we can do these and apply these problems, and then we can build up this whole mole concept and build it up to something that you all will uh, be able to understand. So we're going to take a break. Ty, I think we, must, we can take a little break. I think so. From there. Yes. So mindset is make sure you keep getting on the page. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Like, guys, I cannot stress enough like how I'm impressed with your guys' posts. Keep on going. Keep on going. And yes, Bruce, I think when we come back from the ad break, we just need to put up that question again so they can sure. just copy it again. Absolutely. But yes, mindset is. I still have to give away this camera. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty simple equation. You need to just get on the page and keep on posting. But for now, we're going to see you after this break. And welcome back, Mindsetters. Hope you had a nice little break there. Wow, I'm so busy right now. You guys have been posting, like, keep on going. Keep me working, which is always a good sign. Keep on posting so you can run this awesome Casio calculator. But we're going to quickly post up that question again so you guys can just copy it down and make sure you're paying attention to the detail. It's all in the detail. But for now, let's hand over to Bruce. Bruce, take it away. Right, Ty. Guys, I've put up the question again for you. Let's have a look. Make sure you've copied it down. Okay. Some people say they didn't get it the first time. So there's the equation I've given you. It's potassium chlorate plus uh, gives us potassium chloride and oxygen. It's a, an example of a decomposition reaction that you would have done in, uh, in grade 10. Okay? And I've said in the question, if 35 grams of potassium chlorate is allowed to decompose to potassium chloride and oxygen, what mass of potassium chloride and oxygen will be formed? That's obviously after we've had the decomposition, guys. All right. So please make sure that we do have it down, and please make sure that you think very carefully and have a look at the question very, very carefully and post your answers. It's a beautiful prize that we've got there, the Casio camera, and uh, you know what? I wouldn't mind actually winning it myself. So, uh, but let's make sure that someone out there certainly does get it tonight. Okay. Right. I think we, we, can we, uh, we can move on, and let's have a look now. As I said before the break, we're going to have a look now at some questions, okay, and practice some problems using the mole concept, just to make sure, guys, that we are getting these particular types of uh, questions correct, and we're able to apply those two formulas to work out the number of moles, and obviously manipulate those formulas as best as possible. So, let's have a look here. Well, the first one that I've got... It's quite simple. It just says calculate the number of moles present in 8 grams of sulfur and the second one in 69 grams of sodium. Right, so if we're dealing with masses, okay, I think we should all be quite happy to see now if I'm doing part A first, let's get my pen up, if I'm doing part A first, that we're going to be using this equation. Okay? N is equal to little m over mr. Okay, we want to work out the number of moles, which is n. We've been given a mass uh, of 8 grams, okay? And if we look up in our periodic table, the molar mass of, uh, of sulfur, you will see, is 32 grams per mole. Don't forget the unit 
of molar mass, grams per mole, the mass in one mole of that substance. So all it is is a very simple substitution, 8 over 32, and all we have to do is say 8 divided by 32, easy calculator work, and all of you, I hope, will have got the answer of 0 0.25 mole. Please, guys, notice the, uh, the unit of the mole is M-O-L. Okay, it's, a, it's just a shortened abbreviation of M-O-L-E. Okay, right. So that now was... That now was number A. Number B now was involving 69 grams of sodium. Okay, so part B. Again, it's dealing with mass, so I'm going to put down my mass equation to work out the number of mole. The molar mass of sodium, look in your periodic tables, is going to be 23, or sorry, atomic mass, the relative atomic mass is 23, therefore the molar mass, whoopsie daisy, there goes the pen, and I thought we had sort of fixed it a little bit, but it's doing its own thing, it's 23 grams per mole, okay? So what have we got? Mass of 69, which was given, molar mass of 23, and all we have to do, 69 divided by 23, and we will get an answer of 3 mole. So guys, that's pretty much routine, what I call a uh, bread and breakfast type, type of problem. Very simple, very straightforward. So let's now try and look at something slightly different. It now says, w calculate the mass present in that many moles. And now we've got a little bit of a manipulation that we have to do. Okay, so let's have a look at it. And let's look at A. Right, we've got 2,25 mole of iron atoms. Okay, again, we're dealing with mass, okay, and mole. So again, I'm going to deal with this equation. Okay, but now, guys, they're looking for mass to be calculated. Okay, so what we're going to have to do now is that we're going to have to manipulate the formula. Okay, so how do I manipulate that formula? Well, then mass must equal the number of mole multiplied by the molar mass. That is my new manipulation of the formula, which means then that the number of mole was 2,25 multiplied by, now the molar mass, okay, of iron. We look it up in our periodic tables, and the molar mass of iron works out to be uh, 50 six grams, okay, and therefore what we're going to be doing now is that we're going to say 2,25 multiplied by 56, okay, I'm just going to just do that on the calculator quickly, um, let's just clear it, um, so what we're going to do is 2.25, we're going to multiply it by 56, and we get an answer of 126 grams, okay. So let's minimize that down, and our answer, whoopsie, goodness, there goes the pen, let's get it back. My answer works out to be 126 grams of, of iron. And that's going to be the mass present in 2,25 mole of, of iron. Right, let's have a look now at the second one, which was B. Okay, what have we got here? Right, the mass in 0, 0.156 mole of aluminium atoms. Okay, so again, whoops. Again, we put down our equation. Okay, again, we rearrange the equation to work out the mass. So it's N times the molar mass. And therefore, it's going to be, uh, remind myself of that, uh, that value, it was 0, 0.156 multiplied by, look up the molar mass of aluminium, and that works out to be uh, 27 grams per mole. So 0, 0.156 multiplied by, oopsie, the pen's starting to struggle a bit again. Okay, we seem to have a little bit of a problem there. So I'm going to move slightly underneath it, because there seems to be an area on the board that doesn't like the pen. So there it is times 27. Let's get the calculator up again. Let's clear it. 
So it is 0, 0,156 multiplied by 27 equals, don't forget the equal sign to work. There it is. Let's get it back there. And uh, 4,21 grams, 4,212. Uh, I'm going to round it off to 4,21. And there's my answer. So the answer is the mass is going to be 4 comma two one grams of right there's our problem we've got a little bit of a problem on the board here okay so guys we're just gonna have to bear with me we seem to have a little bit of a problem on this side of the board with this pen okay so guys there was another type of problem now the last type of problem that i want to actually look with you guys is now looking at the number of atoms Okay, we've done two types of problems involving mass. Now let's look in terms of number of atoms, number of particles. Straight away, as soon as I say particles, atoms for example, the concept of Avogadro, the idea of Avogadro's number should start jumping up into your head. So therefore, if we look at A, and we can see now, calculate the number of atoms present in 1,56 mole of zinc atoms, well, we must now be using this formula, okay? N equals N over Na, okay? And what do we have here? Let's extend it slightly. Um, we've got the number of mole is, um, we're looking for the number of atoms, so we're going to have to rearrange for N. So it'll be N multiplied by Na, which is going to equal... 1,56 multiplied by my Avogadro constant, okay, times 10 to the 23. And quite important now is to have a look as to how we now put this into the calculator, okay, because we must make sure that we get this correct. So let's bring up the calculator and let's see what we've got here. All right, so on this particular calculator, it's going to be 1,1.56 multiplied by now, the 6.02, 6.02, okay, 02, and it looks like, looks like this thing has now gone and jammed itself. Okay. Oh, probably what you need to What's do is here? just go into the corner there. You see that? That's an ink layer. So you just need to close that. At the top. Yes, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Click right. that. And then what there you need go. to do for the calculator is use your finger. Otherwise, it will do okay, the same thing. Okay, 6.02. There we go. Okay, we nearly be getting there. Right, I'm just going to deal this back. 6.02. Now, how do we actually enter the times 10 to the 23 portion? Well, we multiply by 10 to the x down here at the bottom. And you will notice that gives us the times 10 at the top. We put 23, and then we press our equal sign. And there we get our answer. And that's going to come out to be, uh, we've got another ink layer here. Um, let's just close, close this. that. Okay, there it is. And as soon as I do, uh, we've got a slight I problem. think you just have to use your finger to go back to, yes, there we go. And then uh, just use your finger and. Doesn't matter. Let's do it. To be, I can remember the answer here. Let's go back here. That's going to equal 9,39 times 10 to the 23 atoms of zinc. Okay. So guys, sorry about that. We just had a few little technical glitches with the board. It does seem to be playing up slightly tonight. But there we've got our answer. And I hope everyone was able to see how I was able to enter that value into my calculator. Okay. Let's have a look at part B now. Part B, if I remind myself, is slightly different now. What I've done with part B, I've introduced a slight degree of difficulty into this type of problem. Because I've, instead of giving you the number of moles, I've given you a mass of carbon. Okay, So if we want to work out the number of particles, and I've given you a mass, we're going to have to involve a two-step process here. So watch what, I, what I'm going to do. We're going to work out the number of atoms in 18 grams of carbon. Okay, So what are we going to have to do now? Okay, I'm just going to extend the page. So for part B, I'm going to first of all have to use my mass equation to work out the number of moles. I've been given 
18 grams of carbon, and I look for my molar mass of carbon, and that works out to be 12 grams per mole. Okay, so I'll do 18 divided by 12. That now gives me an answer of 1,5 mole. That's nice and easy, so I'm not going to worry about doing it on my calculator. Okay, I'm going to extend the page a bit. I want to keep away from this side of the board. Now, I have to use my second equation in uh, the number of moles, small n is equal to capital N over NA. I've got to rearrange now to work out N, my total number of uh, particles, which is going to be N multiplied by NA. Okay, I hope you're all following still. Now, we, N is going to be that 1.5 that we've calculated, multiplied by 6,02 times 10 to the 23. Let's have a bash at the calculator again. Let's clear it. And it's going to be 1.5 multiplied by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 equals, and we get an, an, an answer of 9,03 times 10 to the 23. And therefore, the number of particles is going to equal 9,03 times 10 to the 23, and it's going to be atoms of carbon. And there now is going to be having a look at a two-step problem. So slightly more difficult, okay? Can you see now, my first step had to now work out the number of moles. My second step was then allowing us to work out the number of atoms. Okay, and very quickly, I'm going to do the last one there, just to make sure, and we had 3,2 grams of sulfur. Okay, you'll see now it's quite similar to what we've just done because, and this is part C, so we're going to have to work out the number of moles using my masses. So uh, sulfur is 32, so 3,2 divided by 32 works out to be 0 0.1 mole okay, of sulfur, and then Applying my second equation using Avogadro's number, the total number of particles is the number of moles multiplied by Avogadro's number. And extend the page a little bit more. So it'll be 0 0.1 multiplied by 6,02 times 10 to the 23. And guess what? Into the calculator, I'm just going to save a little bit of time with that one. It works out to be 6,02 times 10 to the 22 atoms of sulfur. And there, guys, is going to be how we actually do these, combining them. We can do a multi-step problem as well, and making sure we understand both the important equations associated with the mole concept. Time? I think it's time we can take a break. All right. Ooh. I've been frantically typing here. <laughs> like, <laughs> once it is, keep on posting. Thank you so much. Keep on going, keep on going, keep on posting, and you can win this awesome Casio calculator. Well, ca calculator. I'm so used to the calculator. Camera. 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 They're all C's. But anyway, <laughs> make sure you keep on posting, keep on posting, keep on posting. But for now, we're going to see you after this break. And welcome back, Mindsetters. Hope you had a nice little break there. Now you're back, you're ready, you're good to go, and you're going to keep on posting. I'm seeing a lot of answers. Guys, bear with me. I'm trying because yo, you guys decided today. Yeah, today all of us, we're just going to post all of us at the same time. <laughs> but just want to say thank you so much. Keep on doing that. Keep on posting. You can win this awesome Casio camera. And we're going to reveal we're gonna reveal the actual answer later on in the show, so make sure you stick around. But for now, this will I hand over to Bruce. Bruce, take it away. Great. Thanks very much, Ty. And guys, I hope it's going well with that challenge question. And um, I'm going to be very keen to see how many people were able to do uh, the calculations correctly. And that's how many people were able to work out the exact mass of potassium chloride and oxygen that was formed um, in that uh, decomposition reaction. Anyhow, before we go and have a look at that answer, let's continue with our revision on the mole concept. And I want to have a look now at molecules and compounds in or applied to the mole concept. What we've been doing so far, guys, is that we've been looking very much at elements and talking about atoms and things like that. Now, what happens if we now bring up and we have to now work with a molecule or a compound? How do we apply the mole concept to these guys? Well, the important thing is, is that 
The question we ask is that do the same concepts and rules apply? And the answer there, guys, is absolutely yes. Guys, we do not change any of the rules. All we do is apply and adapt to using molecules and compounds. But how do we do that? Okay. We will have to make sure that when we calculate the molar mass of the molecule, and I'm going to underline the important bits here that I've typed out for you. When we calculate the molar mass of the molecule, you will need to add the molar mass of each atom in that compound or molecule. Okay. So in other words, the number of moles will also apply to the whole molecule. Guys, those, what I've underlined here, are the crucial bits of understanding when we apply it to molecules and compounds. We must make sure that when we work out the molar mass, we work out the total molar mass of the molecular compound by adding the molar masses of the individual atoms that make up the substance. So, for example, let's have a look now and how we can do it. If I've got a substance and I put sulfuric acid down, H2SO4, how do I now work out the molar mass of sulfuric acid? Well, it's very simple, because if we look at the molar mass of hydrogen, it's 1. If we look at the molar mass of sulfur, it's 32. And if we look at the molar mass of oxygen, it's 16, of, element, of these elemental substances. So therefore now, the molar mass okay, of the molecule is simply going to be 1 times 2, all right? 1 times 2, why? Because we've got two hydrogens in the formula, so we must multiply that molar mass of hydrogen by 2, plus 32, which is just one of them, so just 32, multiplied by 16 times 4. We have got four oxygens, four of them, in the formula. And therefore, with a little bit of calculations, we're going to see now, and I'm not going to waste too much time by using the calculator because it's quite a simple calculation, we will see now that the molar mass of sulfuric acid is 98 grams per mole. Okay, quite a big number now. What about this guy? What about magnesium chloride? Okay, and in fact, what I've done, I've actually done got a little problem here. I've taken it slightly more difficult. And I said, now let's use the mole concept and let's calculate the number of moles in 150 grams of magnesium chloride. So what's the first thing I have to do? I have to work out the molar mass of magnesium chloride before I can go anywhere with the calculation. How do I do it? It's very simple. If we look at magnesium chloride, it's made up of magnesium and chlorine. Magnesium has got a molar mass of 24 okay, grams per mole. Chlorine's got a molar mass of 35,5 grams per mole. Okay, let's look at the formula. 1 times 24, because there's 1 magnesium. 2 times 35,5, because uh, there are 2 chlorines. And what do we get? We get an answer of 95 grams per mole as our molar mass of magnesium chloride. Now, all we have to do is apply our simple formula using mass to calculate the number of moles. Therefore, the mass given is 150. So we get the substitute into there. The molar mass that we've just worked out is 95 uh, grams per mole for magnesium chloride. 150 divided by 95, and guess what we get? We get 1,58 mole of magnesium chloride. So guys, can you see? It's a, fairly, it's a very similar, it's a fairly simple problem. The only difference is we're just simply adding all those masses together. Okay, so what I'm going to have a quick look at now is let's just have a look at a, at a question, okay, just to make sure. And I don't want to waste too much time, um, but here's quite a nice one, okay. Uh, calculate the mass present in 1,98 mole of sodium chloride or 0.75 mole of copper sulfate. Now, guys, the one thing that you are going to have to know is, be a, or you're going to have to be able to do, shall I rather say, is write down your chemical formulae. If you can't write a correct chemical formula, well, we are in trouble, okay? You must be able to do that. You cannot get these questions right if you do not have the correct chemical formula. So it's the skill of chemistry. Being able to understand the language of chemistry is writing that formula down. So if we look at part A, 
okay? And we're dealing with sodium chloride. Guys, that's a fairly simple one, but we all should be getting the chemical formula of sodium chloride as NaCl, which means then we've got one sodium and one chlorine, so simply all we're going to do is look up now the molar mass of sodium, which is 23 grams per mole. We look up the molar mass of chlorine, which we all know, now know is 35,5 grams per mole. We add the two together, and we get a total molar mass of 58,5 grams per mole. There's the molar mass of sodium. Okay, they want us to work out the mass of... Uh, get some space here. There it is. We want to work out the mass, so N is equal to M over MR. We rearrange the formula to calculate mass, which is N times MR. Okay. And what do we get? We simply substitute how many mole did we have? We had 1,98 mole. Is that correct? Let me just check that. Uh, yes, 1,98 mole. Sorry, I just couldn't remember it for a moment. Multiplied by the molar mass of 58,5, and what do we get for the mass? Simple calculation, it works out to be 115,83 uh, grams of NaCl. Okay, pretty straightforward, hopefully pretty easy. Okay, I'm not, um, I'm not going to do the other one, the other one's exactly the same, but guys, remember, what's my formula for copper sulfate? Don't forget that copper sulfate is... CuSO4, so you'd have to work out now the molar mass of copper sulfate. Okay, right. The other question that I've got here, I'll just do one of them. It says calculate the number of molecules present in 7,33 grams of carbon dioxide gas. Slightly more complicated because now we've been given a mass. You want to work out the number of molecules. It's particles. So I'm going back to that two-step operation that I showed you guys in the last segment. So we've got to work out the number of moles first by saying uh, N is equal to little m over MR. We're dealing with carbon dioxide gas. So that's going to be carbon is 12. Oxygen is going to be 16 times 2, okay, which works out to be 44 grams per mole. Okay, and therefore, it's going to be 7,33 multiplied by, oh, sorry, not multiplied, divided by, let's change that, divided by 44, and the number of moles works out to be uh, 0 0.75. No, that's actually, that, uh, have I got this correct? Um, work out the mass, sorry, I've just got, let me just use the calculator. Um, mass over molar mass, and whoops, up we come. Clear it, a 7, 7,33 uh, uh, divided by 44, and that works out to be, get the number of moles, 0, 0,166. Sorry about that. Let's get this back. I think I'll put an ink layer over the top over there, and let's clear that. Bring that out of the way. There we go. Starting to get this to work quite nicely now, and we have an answer of 0, 0,166 mole. Okay, now what we want to do, we want to work out the number of particles. N is equal to N over Na. And number of particles is simply going to be um, the uh, number of moles multiplied by Na, which is going to be 0, 0,166 multiplied by 6,02 times 10 to the 23. And extend the page a little bit, uh, get the calculator. Uh, the calculator seems to have disappeared off me. So I haven't got the correct answer because I was going to use the calculator for it, but I'm sure you can all use your calculators, and we are able now to get that answer. Okay. So guys, I hope you're able to follow those two-step processes that we had and making sure that we do apply them across there. Now, we've got five minutes left. Um, I'd like to go and do the answer to the challenge question. All right. Okay. Do we have any winners at this stage, Ty? Yes, we do. I can't necessarily announce them. Okay. But we do have some great ah, posts, and I just want to say, guys, awesome jobs. Wow. It's a tricky one. It's a tricky question, and you're going to see it just now. So make sure, if you still have any guesses, just put 
put them on the page. But for now, I'm going to hand it over to Bruce. Bruce okay, can right. I just have a look oh, at it? Because no I've problem. got the answer here. So there now is the golden ticket. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to put up the model answer for you guys to have a look. And then Ty will be able to work out at some stage and announce who the winner is going to be. So let's have a look now at that formula. KCLO3, or this equation, shall I rather say, is KCLO3 will decompose to KCL plus O2. Now, guys, what's the first thing, before we do anything in the calculation, what's the first thing we have to do? We have to balance the equation. And I know, and I'm telling you right now, a lot of you forgot to balance the equation. Because if you don't balance the equation, you will not be able to get these answers correct. So, what are we going to have to do? Let's get a nice color to balance it. I'm going to have to put a 2 here. I'm going to have to put a 2 there. And I'm going to have to put a 3 there. That is simple balancing from grade 10, guys. So we should all be, we should all be able to do that. Okay, the question is how many of you guys remembered how to do it? Once we've done that, let's have a look. Right, let's go back to my yellow pen. So what we're going to do is for the first part, we're going to look at the mass of KCL. Now, we were given 35 grams of potassium chlorate. Okay, now, if we were given 35 grams of potassium chlorate and we want to work out the potassium chloride that's formed, what we have to look at now is the ratio according to the number of moles that is given according to the equation. So if we have a look at potassium chlorate to potassium chloride, can you see now that we've got a 2 mole of potassium chlorate breaks down to give me 2 mole of potassium chloride. So what I have now is a 2 is to 2 ratio, or we've got a 1 is to 1. It's the same thing. A 2 is to 2 is the same as a 1 is to 1 ratio. So therefore, if I can work out the number of moles of potassium chlorate, whoops, the number of moles of potassium chlorate that I've now, um, that has been broken down, has been decomposed, we were given 35 grams of potassium chlorate, and I work out my molar mass of potassium chlorate is going to equal, well, potassium is 39, chlorine is 35,5, and we've got six, uh, three oxygens of 16 each. That gives me a total of uh, 122,5 grams per mole, which means that 35 divided by 122,5 is going to give me the number of moles of, uh, of potassium chlorate is 0 0.286 mole. Okay, now because my ratio is 1 to 1, then the number of mole of potassium chloride must equal exactly the same number of mole because it's 1 to 1. Okay, so therefore... We can now work out the mass, saying N is equal to M over MR. Mass of potassium chloride is the number of moles multiplied by MR. Whoopsie, extend the page, which will be 0, 0,286 uh, multiplied by the molar mass of potassium chloride. Um, I'm just running out of time, so I'm going to put up quite quickly, which is actually 74.5. And therefore, the mass of potassium chloride works out to be 21 comma three one grams okay that is the first part and i wonder how many of you guys out there got it now the second part is to now work out the mass of oxygen now let's have a look at the ratio of potassium chlorate to oxygen and can you see now the ratio is two is to three which is basically the same as saying 1 is to 1.5. So this ratio now is a little bit more tricky. So therefore, what do we have to do now? Well, we know now that the number of moles of potassium chlorate, whoops, we know from the previous question that the number of moles of potassium chlorate is 0 0.286 mole. So therefore, the number of moles must be in the ratio, um, this is the moles of oxygen to KCl, 
3, which must be in the ratio of 1 is to 1.5, which means, if you extend the page, it must be 0 0.286 to the number of moles of oxygen, 0 comma 429. And that's the number of mole that we've got. Okay, so therefore, if we've now got the number of mole of oxygen, okay, we can then simply go over here and we can say N is equal to uh, M over MR. Okay, M is going to equal N times MR, which is equal to uh, 0, 0,429 multiplied by the molar mass of oxygen is 32 because it's diatomic and we get an answer of 13,73 grams of oxygen. And there, guys, is my answer. I wonder how many of you guys were able to get that. Ty, I think that's, that's basically it from me. All right. Wow, guys, you had me busy. But yo, guys, I just want to say congratulations to those who won. You'll be finding out very soon. But I just want to say, just because we're giving away a camera doesn't mean you need to keep on posting like this. You just need to make sure that you keep on the page. Doesn't what, what I meant to say was actually, mindset is, just because there's a camera here doesn't mean you just now all of a sudden, yes, I'm interested. No, you just need to maintain the same interest because you won't be giving away cameras all the time. But the amount of activity on the page was just unbelievable. It was amazing. Just want to say thank you to, to you guys for posting. But for now, this is where I say thank you and see you next time. But, lab but also, just want to say a quick thank you to Liberty before I forget. And yes, now on that note, see you next time.